Most people talk whatever. We talk whatevsky. Yee. You're going to post this on Facebook, right? No, I'm going to post this on SoundCloud. Oh, that's even better. Because I'm going to say things that people on Facebook shouldn't hear. <laughs> Are you friends with your parents on Facebook? Sort of. Not that close. I usually block things that I don't want oh, them to see. I see. But I do have. And I usually don't block them. <laughs> the things that I don't want them to see. <laughs> it's all in the privacy settings. Just change it. Well, actually, they don't mind us, so. <laughs> so there are probably cool parents that you can trust, huh? Well, not, not for all the things, though. <laughs> Psh! <laughs> <laughs> not for all the things. So, what do you want to talk about? So, I'm going to talk about this colleague of mine. He's still my colleague, but he's more of a supervisor. This guy I'm drawing right now on the sketchbook. Oh yeah, she's drawing a guy that's eating lust cake. One of my characters in the Sin Cakes. Yeah, do you know why I draw him eating lust cake? Why? Because he's like a workaholic, you know. Because I heard stories from my colleagues as well that he likes to sleep late. He's just just sitting. In he's lusting bed. over his work. Yep, he's just working all night. That's what he do, like almost every day. It's kind of sad though. He's like the polar opposite of me. I'm a procrastinator. I can't really keep something done unless I'm like <laughs> into it, unless I have the mood. If I don't, then I'm just gonna keep procrastinating until God knows when. Well, the thing is, I have no idea what he's doing, but certainly it's because of work. <laughs> Boss probably. He's in love with his job, yo. <laughs> yeah, I think he really loves his job a lot. Like, he always created these classes during work hours, like, a few hours before we go home. He always started classes like, well, we learn about creating a website, we learn about how to monetize our website and all that. It's all about digital marketing. We're basically on the same page. The difference is just more experienced than me. <laughs> and somehow I kind of hate that. I don't know why. But I thought you like hardworking people no, in general. Not, I mean, I'm kind of not hate, more like envious. Oh. You know what I mean? You should draw yourself eating the envy cake. I think so, but I'm not hardworking enough like him. That's the problem. Me neither. <laughs> but I... Because I'm more of a procrastinator. Same I like here. to sleep a lot. High five. High five, yeah. I actually like to learn a lot of things. Mm. from him but I do feel like oh my god I'm so far behind from him you know okay I think this sounds rude but I mean he doesn't graduate yet and already graduated and it's it's in my expertise so I feel like more challenged by this guy Ooh. yeah Oh, before we continue, we want to give some shout-outs to our friends, our colleagues. Sure. I'm going to say happy birthday. A very late happy birthday to Fajar. Because we actually forgot about his birthday. Isn't that really bad? <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> That's really embarrassing. Oh my god. On our website, we, we're recording this on February 5th. That means it's Camille's birthday. Camille is our friend all the way from the Philippines. Hi! Hey, happy birthday! And to anyone who's having their birthdays this month, you can celebrate with us too. Let's happy join up! Birthday. Oh, I forgot to the guy I'm dating right now. Happy birthday. Happy you're... birthday! Happy birthday, you're so old. And speaking of birthdays, you know what I hate the most? What? What do you hate the most? It's when someone else, a stranger, mm -hmm. having the same birthday as yours, and then they have a bigger party than yours. Okay. Isn't that infuriating and like envy-inducing? Yep. I'm just really pissed off thinking about it. Yeah, especially when they actually hold their birthday at the hotel. The conference hall, exactly. Like, they invite more than 100 people. Like, how do you do that for a birthday party? And you have a tiny little family or a group of friends. You can't even beat them. That's why. I mean, like, how much money do you put out for such celebration? Especially when they're turned 17 or 18, you know. It happens a lot when I was in school. I was like turning 10, some kid who's in the third grade turning 8, and they have a bigger celebration than mine and have the same birthday as mine, and uh, it kind of pissed me off. Yeah. Well, lucky my parents came to the rescue. <laughs> Why? How did they rescue you? Party bags. Ah, I see. I see now. Thanks, mom and dad, for the party bags, and pretty much for putting up with the BS I come with. But I'm not really into birthday, you know. I'm more of when I reach my age. I'm actually 22. Now. I don't really care about my birthday party or anything. Moreover, the people who actually say happy birthday to me. At first, before this age, like I really do care a lot Like who is saying happy birthday to me. But right now, I don't care. Just happy birthday to me. I'm already fabulous. <laughs> you know you're fabulous. <laughs> I know. 
I thought our 20s were supposed to be a year that were filled with insecurities and stuff, and we've come to accept ourselves in our 30s, which is gonna come like 10 years in the future. Yeah, I do have a lot of insecurities about myself. I do, especially at work, and I already talked about that, right? Yep. Yep, that's one of my insecurities. I'm not mentioning the other. <laughs> There are a lot of things. I mean, yeah, probably we're, we're insecure because we were envious of other people's talents or yep. abilities. Yep. Which is something that. Actually, don't envy your money, I just envy your talents, and that's it. <laughs> Like, Wait, why are we suddenly talking about money? Like, usually people envy someone's wealth. Like, oh, this guy has more money than I do. Like, or fame. Yeah. How dare she become a rock star? I'm supposed to be that rock star. Yeah, people tend to be jealous of someone's car. Like, they have BMWs and Mercedes and all that. But I don't really care. I just want Honda Jazz or Honda Brio right now. <laughs> It's cheap. It's like, I just want to drive a car. Yeah, I just want to drive a car, whatever it is. I just want to get a license because everyone's doing it. Like even my friends who are younger than me, yep. younger than us, they, they have do, cars. I like do have a license, but I don't have a car. That's that's kind of sad. You though. freaking have a license? You didn't tell me about it, dude. <laughs> I do have a license, and uh, well, I didn't take any tests. There is someone that we know at the police station, so we just need his help, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> But I do take driving lessons. I do take. I do take driving lessons too. Mm -hmm. Like I went to several classes and I kind of mm -hmm. blew up the recent one. I think when I don't... you're in Indonesia, you really need someone inside the police station to get what you want. That's depressing fact, but that's how it is. Oh well, I'm gonna try. <laughs> Maybe uh, you should move to Bukasi with yeah. me though. <laughs> Then you can get your license. Yeah. But I can't drive a motorcycle though. But I still need to get my license. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I do drive motorcycles. I do have a motorcycle, but I don't have a license yet. It's kind of weird, right? You little dingus. <laughs> Are the main reasons why we envy people? I think because we usually think low for ourselves and think high for others. Maybe we see people who are more successful and richer than yeah. us and it's yeah. more of not rich or famous people, more mm -hmm. of people we see similar to ourselves but mm -hmm. they're getting more luck. Like yeah. why yeah. why do they have more luck? That's what I'm thinking as well. Like, like that's supposed to be us in their shoes, not yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we tend to forget that there are actually a lot of people who are less fortunate than us. We're bad people. Yeah, we're actually bad for being envy to others, but I think that's human nature as well. That's only human nature. All the seven deadly sins are in human nature. Yeah, exactly. I mean, without them, there probably wouldn't be any balance. Yeah, right? right? Yeah, sometimes I do think like that. But then I also think that maybe is it me that I'm not uh, working hard enough? Or... I don't really seek other opportunities. You know, when you see rich people, you tend to think, how come we'll never be like them? I feel like I'm always stuck in the same place. Like, but not, then not moving on. Yeah, not moving on. Maybe we're just lazy. Yeah, maybe I'm just too relaxed in the same place. Like, uh, like stuck in a bubble. Is that what you say? Stuck in a bubble means you're uh, close-minded. Oh, oh wait, that's not what I want to say. But it's more like you're so comfortable in your zone that you don't want to move on. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of stuck in a bubble as well. Yeah. Like, you're afraid to take the next step. Because you already think, oh, okay, this is good enough for me. What do you call that word? Oh, yeah, complacent. But then you also complain about seeing people more successful than you. It's just so weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's like you want to go somewhere, but then you don't want to take the next step. Yeah. Maybe just, you like, don't know how to take the next step. Maybe you don't know where to step. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking lately. Like, for example, This guy that I date, he told me that I'm not supposed to be in here because I graduated abroad. I should stay there, not here. I should not work in here. He told me that. Why? Just, well, you just wasted your whole life, your whole time to work here. You just have to go abroad and seek other opportunities. He told me that. But I'm already okay with these people and this is my career. And he told me, no, that's not how you think. You should always be jumping might. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like my problem too. I'm always yeah. afraid to go in front. But at least you know more about public transport than I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I need to get used to it. I'm, I'm just, more of an isolated person than you are. Well, you just have to explore. You just uh, well, there's internet nowadays. You just Google everything before you get on with it. Because that's what I did back then. You know, I have to learn all the rules. You Google them or you give them. Shout out to give. <laughs> oh, shout out to give. Of course, I give. You donate every time you search something. <laughs> every search comes with a donation of 10 bucks, yeah. 10 rupees. Yeah, 10 rupees. Like even y'all who don't live in Indonesia, you can still use give. Donate more, people. Yay! Of course. If 
you want to do something good, just do it with gif. Two V is not one V. Yeah. Two <laughs> Man, I also think that why am I so comfortable in this comfort zone? I do want to explore just like what I did to get on public transport. But I think it's a different case because when you get on a public transport, that's because you actually need it to get somewhere. But then for this kind of matter, like for the career path, uh, maybe I haven't seen that yet that I really should get on with it. I should move to somewhere else. I think I just really haven't seen it yet. That's why I feel like I'm still comfortable at the moment. Well, maybe you need to live your life here for a few moments yeah. before you're ready to go out. Yeah, because even though that I don't seem like I'm actually planning on something, but I do have plans for the future. Even though I still say I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do have plans. I completely don't. You win at life. <laughs> well, I'm actually seeking for a scholarship to get out of this country. Not really to get out of this country, just want to learn something new. <laughs> we could learn something new from the internet every Every day. Yeah, but it's different because when oh, okay. you see the internet, you actually just read it, but you don't get to experience it. That's what I'm seeking. The experience. You live in some other place. Well, that's what I do every day. God, my life is sad. <laughs> really? Uh, You've got a high imagination. I can make up for that. Yeah, you do have higher imagination than mine. Though. <laughs> it feels like when I'm like watching YouTube vids about a rock concert, it feels like I'm there. I, I can't do that. Though. <laughs> I can get high without weed. I hallucinate. Oh my god. <laughs> I hallucinate! Well, I do have a uh, high imagination, but not as high as yours, though. Yeah. You know what? My high imagination sometimes aids me if I'm feeling envious of people, so I can like I can just imagine what they're having, yeah. <laughs> even though it's that's, it's not even that's cool though. That's cool. It's not because I don't have that. <laughs> so you envy my imagination? Yeah. <laughs> because you don't have to pay a lot of money. To, you don't have to cost a lot for that. You just need your imagination, and that's it. But for me, I feel like I need to get somewhere, you know, to reach to that point that people will see me as successful. Well, at least my family sees me as someone successful. Hey, I want to be successful too. I mean, course, imagination isn't do. everything, you know. Everyone do, but for me, it's like, well, just hearing from my dad that he told me that this is not my place. I feel like, what am I doing? Did I do something wrong? Am I not good enough? Do you actually feel where some days that you don't really feel good enough about yourself? Just All the time. You just don't do enough of what you do. Especially when it's your expertise. Like drawing comics and songs? Yeah, you don't feel like it when you see other people, oh my god, they're so cool. Uh, I don't know, probably only all the time. Yeah, all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, we keep comparing ourselves to all these better people on the internet. And yeah. like, why are they famous? And yeah, what's missing from our stuff? That's what I'm feeling lately when I go to work. You know, sometimes I do have those episodes where I get panic attacks and suddenly you just cry for no reason at yeah. the office. And that's really embarrassing, but... I thought that was a normal thing. But for me, it's very embarrassing that I tend to hide it and just... I just hide in the bathroom, just cry silently. You do need to talk it out to yeah, some people. I do. Sometimes I do want to talk it out, but I don't know to who do I need to talk it out. And I just talk it out right now. <laughs> That's what this talk show is for? Yeah. It's, it's just up bottled up for all this time. It's just bottled up and now it's just exploding right now. Not really exploding, just saying it one by one. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time when I feel like my colleagues are attacking me. Like, like they're they stabbing you in the back? Yeah, attacking me in the front at the back as well. Like, I do kind of have this impression that they do talk behind about other people. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> That There's, makes them crappy colleagues if they do. I don't, I don't really want to um, label them as crappy people because I don't really know them enough. But I do have the impression that they do like to talk about three other colleagues behind their backs. And not talk it out in the front, but sometimes they do talk about it in the front just when it's necessary. For example, I did a mistake. It's just a careless mistake to be honest, but I do feel like attacked for that. I don't really like those kind of people. Like If they see us making a mistake, they have to tell us like up front. Yeah, it's okay if it's up front, but... <laughs> You're doing there something was this wrong. Uh, person that point out my mistake at the office group, and everyone sees it, and I feel embarrassed by that. Oh, yeah. And I do feel attacked in that moment. And I, I saw that one hour before I go to work, just say, oh my god, I don't feel like I want to go to work today, oh my god. I don't feel good enough to go to the office and just do my work, you know. I was thinking like that, and then I just, you know, breathe just try to relax myself okay maybe this is not how he intended it to be maybe he just want to point it out and maybe he doesn't know that it's my doing so he just posted it in the group so i was thinking like, okay okay what should i say to him what should i say to him at first i wanted to be denial about that but then everyone will be asking who's doing this you know 
it will be me. So you, you took a heroic step to just own up and yeah. th that's what I did. Yeah, I did say, oh, it was this. Okay, thank you for notifying me. That's it. That's what I say to him <laughs> in the group. I just say thank you to him. He it's... didn't talk shit again about you in the back, right? I don't know. But I do feel the impression that they do talk shit about me somehow. But maybe it could be my imagination. So here's the thing about you and me. You have a good imagination. Mine is just imagining bad things happen. <laughs> it works both ways, actually. Yeah, Everyone says I'm pretty much a negative person, so my imagination just sometimes they take control mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when they take control at their worst mm -hmm. I'm starting to think all these bad things yeah happening. exactly like it's not true but because lately I've been doing a lot of mistakes lately people suddenly just say to me okay there's this thing there's this thing you should do this you should do that well, before they don't really tell me anything about it, and then suddenly they say this, so I feel attacked by that. That's how I feel. And so I was having a breakdown suddenly. I just cried in the bathroom. Like, oh my god, what did I do? What did I say? Hopefully, no one knows that I actually cried at the office. It's just so embarrassing to know that. The big girls don't cry. <laughs> But yeah, that's when I think that maybe this is how depressed people feel like every day. No, actually, depressed don't people, they don't feel anything. Oh yeah, I do remember that I have a friend that suffered from an illness and then she became depressed and then she yeah. she took this Depression pill. Depression is a serious business. Yeah, she took this pill that makes her not feel anything. Then people uh, call her crazy. You mean antidepressants? Yep. And then, yeah, it makes her don't feel anything. I don't know if there's antidepressants or... I don't know what that is. But it's a psycho... Psychosis, is it? Is that how you see it? I don't know. Psychosis? Yeah, I think it's, it's just a medicine for psychological um, disease. Condition? I don't know. I don't know these terms, but that's... Oh no, those are antidepressants. I thought you were talking about a condition, the medical condition she's suffering. <laughs> we're embarrassing ourselves right now. <laughs> yeah, because we have no idea about that. But I just feel bad that people actually think that she's crazy, but she's not. She's just yeah. taking her medications and that's it. Exactly. Yeah. People should be exposed to all of these kind of issues. Yeah, like, because need, they have no idea about it. We need it. to help, like us who are not suffering from depression. We need to help them. We need to understand them. Yeah, we need to. Like, they're not crazy, people. <laughs> you just need help, okay? But we can all feel depressed yeah, without suffering from depression. I just imagine that people will feel this, the what I feel this way, but for every day, like every moment, that will be very sad. But to suffer depression means you're gonna be depressed every time. Okay, I'm just trying to understand these people. Maybe next time we have to invite someone who has an actual depression. Yeah, and they can like this. educate us on the, the subject. Yeah, I think we need this for the next topic though. Alright. So, how about you? You do feel not being good enough all the time, right? Why is that? Inadequacy. L okay. Like we said just now. I mean, everyone else seems better than us. We mm -hmm. seem very average and mm -hmm. subpar. And then we feel like we're not doing enough. And we thought we're too lazy to do mm -hmm. some things. But in fact, we're not supposed to push it. Maybe it's not our chance yet. Maybe mm -hmm. we have our own timelines of success. Mm -hmm. that, that's what everyone's been telling us. And then, what do you do to overcome that? Oh, you mean the simple envy overcoming method? Yep. <laughs> I copy people. I don't want to say it, but yeah, I used to do it. I used to copy people's drawings and like, <laughs> I, I told people I copied from this artist, this person, and then... Okay. But are they mad or something? Well, yeah, back then they were like raging and stuff, and so I kind of avoided them. But here's the thing that can defeat me, reverse psychology. So I've got a friend, right? I copied her stuff and then... Mm -hmm. she, and then when she found out, she was like, oh my god, this is familiar. And I'm like, yeah, I copied it from you. I told her, like, straight in the face, I copied from her. And then I was like, should I, like, link this to your Instagram page or something? And she's like, nah, it's okay. And I don't feel like doing it anymore. I don't feel like copying <laughs> her anymore. I actually bought stuff from her in the end. <laughs> so, I see now. You're actually doing this for a reaction from other people, right? Yeah, no, not really. But when you're being a dick to me, just because <laughs> I'm doing that mistake, I'm gonna do that mistake again just to piss you off <laughs> no in all seriousness if you find someone that you think might be copying your stuff do call them out but don't give them hate or do it in an angry tone just act chill and talk to them ask them whether they're copying out of envy or admiration give them the illusion that it's no biggie and maybe help them find their own thing Angrily calling them out would just cause them to be resentful towards you and they're just gonna keep copying you and you don't want that, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know how I motivate myself aside from thinking positively. Like trying to think it other way, like to push those negative thoughts away. That's how I do. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, here's another thing I did. Lie to myself. 
Okay, you lie to yourself, but what? Things that I can't do, that I keep telling myself that I can. I think that's what most successful people are doing though. Yeah, it's they about think that, success. They think that they don't know how to do this, but then they have to lie to themselves until they actually can do it. They have to repeat, I think I can, I over think and I over can. again. Yeah, until you actually get to the point that you're actually doing it, can do it. But for me, I'm more of having problems with other people actually, like communicate with them and all that. But then how do I motivate myself from being so negative all the time? I just talk to them. Yeah. Face to face and mm. bring up the issue? No, that's not how I do it. I just talk to them normally. Just I don't want to bring the issue because that's so embarrassing. So them. if you have someone who you envy, like yeah. you talk to them. Yeah, I just talk to them like normal people, and like, then it not just, bring up the issue. Yeah, and then it just goes away. Now. It just, How are you so stoic? I don't know. <laughs> it just happens somehow. Uh, from talking to them, I just understand them better that they actually have their own struggles and all that to get to where they be. That's a good point. That's how I do. Like the people we envy, they're people too, and they have their own problems, and yeah. they probably envy you back. Yeah, that's why. Sometimes it's funny because when I talk to them, uh, the people that I envy, they actually say things that they envy about me. I didn't bring up the issue yet, and then suddenly they bring it up. Like you went to he went to Europe to study. That sounds like he or she is jealous to me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this person is also being envious to me. Okay, <laughs> so we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> no, same book but different pages. <laughs> yeah, we're being envious to each other. <laughs> I kind of like once envied that my friend mm -hmm. is socially adaptable. Mm -hmm. It's easy for them to talk to people and like make mm -hmm. new friends and mm -hmm. managing in general. And mm -hmm. she's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm envious at your artworks and songs and comics. Okay. And I'm like, that's about it. That's that's like pretty much my advantages compared to yours. You can manage. You, you have a high paying job. You know how to make friends. You're pretty much sociable. And, and what did she tell you? She just told me that people have their own advantages and disadvantages. Just live with it. Yeah, I agree though. You have different qualities. Yes, exactly. I just agree with her. <laughs> By the way, did I tell you that I can feel secondhand envy? What is that? I can feel envious on behalf of other people. Even even though they're not envious, mm -hmm. I, I'm sort of feeling envious about other people for them. Like, why don't my friend do the same thing as this guy does? Or... Oh, I don't really know that. I don't really feel that secondhand envy. Or maybe, are you saying that when your friend is telling you about the person they envy, then you feel envious for them too? Is that what you're saying? I guess, yeah. Oh, okay. When you see someone who your friend can be, oh. that should be your friend instead of the other person. Oh, I see. That's, okay. I don't think the secondhand envy is the word. I don't know. What's that word? <laughs> I don't even know either. I'm just making things up. Or maybe it's just envy. Yeah, envy for other people. Yeah, envy for other people. <laughs> okay then. I think we need to shout out to Gia, you know, because she always give out shout outs during her radio. How do you say that? Radio broadcast. Radio she broadcast. Was... Yeah, just shout out to her, Gia. Hi, Gia. Hi, Gia. Even though we never met in person, I miss your chirpiness and enthusiasm back in the Ask FM days. Hi, Gia. Uh, are you visiting Bando? For how long you stay though? <laughs> because I really do want to meet you. Like you seem so interesting. And don't fret so much in your love life. I've always think you're quite lucky with your traveling and music career and it's probably gonna be the same with your love life too. Just so you know, we both will ship you with whoever you're in love with. Cause why not? You're attractive as hell. People are saying you're the beautiful Mario. <laughs> that accidental Mario cosplay was totally spot on. <laughs> see like it's just uh you know it feels so depressing that you get to know awesome people online but then you don't get to meet them yet oh no yeah because i have a lot of online friends but i haven't met them yet but i'm about to this year <laughs> That is so depressing. Like, yeah. when you see the squad that you envy uh -huh. hanging out with the friends that they have in real life, and then you're like over here and your friends are all scattered yeah. across the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah problems with international yeah. school kids, am I right? Oh, yeah, exactly. And then, okay, this year I'm just planning to meet my online friends. Like, for this April, I'm just going to meet Sefin. Hi, Sefin. <laughs> Sup, Sefin. Sup, Sefin. Loving I'm your art, girl. Yeah. We should do a comic collab sometime, Sefin. All three of us. Cool, go on. Just keep doing you. I guess that's pretty much it. We're people, we're born individuals. We have our own qualities. We have our own timeline, so we don't have to compare ourselves to different people because I keep telling myself this and yet I I never listen to my own advices. And <laughs> this is like everyone else's advices and they have a point and then I keep telling myself this. And <laughs> I think uh, the other method is to actually look to other people who are less fortunate than us. Yeah. Less fortunate than us and then we feel, yeah. we kind of feel bad yeah. for them and we, we want to help them. Yeah, I think the best 
best way is to just help them at some point. At least try to help them if you can. Bring them a step closer to what you have because some of them might be secretly envying you. Actually, when you help people, you do actually feel good about yourself. You finally realize that, okay, I'm here for something and I'm here to help other people. Isn't that kind of good, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but what if you tried helping them but you failed? You're gonna feel even more bad. Well, sometimes that happens, but you actually... Oh, okay, maybe it's not my turn to help other people right now. Maybe some other time. That's another tip. Don't push it. Mm-hmm. If you did something and then it doesn't work out the way you want it, mm-hmm. maybe you're not intended to do it at that day. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just need more time or yeah. effort. I think timing is the solution, right? Yeah, but some people are go-getters. They need to keep trying and trying and... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They s- Whenever things don't go their way, they see themselves as failures. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I'm envious about other people, but there are also a lot of people who are actually envious of me. And I do get food for that, though. (laughs) It's a good thing to consider. Tip number three. Think that there are actually other people who are envious of you. You're not alone in this world. Envying goes both ways. It doesn't go just one way. Yeah. Unless you're dealing with a narcissist. (laughs) Well, that reminds me of Donald Trump. Oh my Uh, god. I'm stereotyping now. Sorry, narcissists. (laughs) But not sorry because you're narcissistic. (laughs) Well, since I say Donald Trump, just forget what to say though. Of his tan skin and his uh, embarrassing hair. (laughs) Embarrassing hair. (laughs) It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just not so presidential to me. (laughs) It's just like another celebrity that happens to be in the White House. (laughs) Now we're talking about Donald Trump. Oh my god. This is not good (laughs) now. That's all the time we have for today, but before we go, we want to give one more love to give.com. That's G E E V V dot com. G E E V V dot com. The charitable Google alternative. Donate while you search. If you want to help someone, but you don't really have the money or the effort to do it, just go on to give.com and just search whatever you want. Search random things like feed and cake. Yeah, because every time you search, you donate 10 bucks. 10 rupiah with every search. And then it will be given to people in need. And you're actually doing good. Feel good about yourself. Yeah. Whenever you're feeling depressed, you can just search with give. It can even do something good. It will make you feel better 100%, but at least you're feeling slightly better. 10 bucks better. <laughs> <laughs> that looks better. Even though you're searching for porn. (laughs) Children under 12.